Hello all and welcome to Law One Gaming with more Stellaris Combat Theory. Today's episode features no math, or at least very little, and as a result might be a bit shorter than the usual. That's all because today we're looking at afterburners to see how they compare and what use they have. The results may shock you, or they might not. Either way, we're going to find out today on Stellaris Combat Theory. Like I said, today we're going to be focusing on afterburners to see how they do versus other auxiliary mounts. For this episode, I had to look around the internet to see what other people were saying because on paper, afterburners don't seem to do much, and the internet seemed to just about be as confused as I was. However, I did see a few people saying that they were good for corvettes and cruisers at getting close and launching torpedoes. The consensus also seemed clear that the plus combat speed modifier didn't actually provide any boost to evasion, as some might have suspected. So, the big benefit, and really the only benefit, seems to just be that it'll get your short-range weapons in range a bit faster than normal, which, for torpedoes, is pretty sensible, since they've got a range of 60, and most large weapons have a range of 80 or more. As such, if this idea holds true, we can expect our afterburner ships to have to deal with as fewer as 1-2 to two long-range volleys before getting their own weapons to fire which might make the difference in making afterburners the best. Then again, maybe not. Then again again, maybe there is some hidden evasion boost. The only way we'll know is through rigorous testing, so let's get started. The first series of tests I'll run will be with Corvettes, using the model types you're seeing now. As you can see, I've got the build identical other than swapping around the auxiliary slot. I'm also leaving the power differences in, rather than keeping all their surplus power the same, because you're trading off surplus power for capacitors or afterburners, so I consider that a part of the cost of using them over the other options. The Corvettes will be facing off against this battleship model, which you'll note has a long range capability with high accuracy and tracking, so it should give our Corvettes a run for their money. The test will be of 10 trials of each model, with 40 Corvettes against 5 battleships. The fleets will start at max range from each other, or near to it, and I'll have them start by facing each other from left to right, with the Corvettes on the left and the battleships on the right. The winner will be the model with the highest average remaining HP. And after running the test, the results were as follows. Afterburners performed the worst, by far, even doing worse than the control model. After that, it seemed like the capacitor model was the best and had the second lowest variance, making it rather consistently good. But the regen and plate models also performed close to the capacitor model. This is actually sort of weird, since this test is based on remaining HP, so we'd sort of expect the test to be biased towards the plate model rather than the capacitor. Then again, with a difference of 30 HP per ship, this bias isn't so significant. So the results from here are clear. Afterburners appear to be worse than, well, nothing. The next test is more of the same, except this time we'll be using cruisers with the model types you're seeing here. As before, the builds are identical other than swapping the auxiliary slot, and again with the power differences being left in place. They'll also be fighting a battleship, except this time the target will be this model here. Just like before, we'll run 10 trials each, but instead of doing 40 on 5, since they're cruisers, we'll do 10 cruisers against 4, to 4 battleships, starting at max range or near to it, facing each other from left to right. And lastly, we're again looking for the model with the highest remaining HP so we can expect a slight bias towards the plate model again since it starts with higher HP. The results? Well, we've got to talk about them for a bit. While a lot of the results lined up with previous testing, there was a very troublesome area, namely the results compared between the regen model and the control model. Oddly, the regen model performed worse than the control model, which is just wrong, since the regen model is strictly better than the control model other than costing more minerals, so i.e. strictly better in performance since it's control plus some healing. This problem could mean any number of things, such as 1. We're using weapons with high variance and damage, and we simply had a number of results that were extreme outliers, which is confirmed in part by the high standard deviation we see. In which case, running a lot more tests would bring the numbers closer together. Or 2. There's some hidden variable I didn't account for in my test, and I happened to leave the regen model at a disadvantage regarding this variable. In which case, I need to remake the test and all future tests with this hidden variable in mind. Three, there were just math goblins. Look it up, they're real. Four, some combination of the above, or five... Pfft, 
I don't know. If I had to pick, I'd wager it's more one than anything else. Again, due to the high variance that we see. So, what does this mean for test number two? It's suspect, and the results are questionable. So, I'm leaving it to you guys and gals to help me figure out what went wrong with test number two. I'll happily do a retest video based on your suggestions, but for now I'm going to disregard the results of test number two since I'm really not sure how to fix the problem right now. Based on test number one, afterburners don't seem to be worthwhile. The difference in speed just seemed to be less important than the difference in defense boosts. There was also no evidence that I saw that afterburners increased the evasion of our vessels, as we would have seen afterburners outperform the control cases, and in this inst instance, they actually performed worse. So on a quick comparison when focusing on afterburners, I'd say avoid afterburners, go with capacitors. Then again, as I noted above, there is always a chance I've missed something, or maybe there's a more ideal way to show off the afterburners. And as such, if you think I did miss something, or if you know that way, let me know in the comments below. Especially if you think you can fix test number two for me. I really got no idea on that one. Also, if there's something totally different you'd want me to look into, please let me know below. And with that said, this is Law one Gaming signing off, and saying, see you next time, Space Cowboys. Enjoy the video? Well, hey, you should consider subscribing, or maybe checking out some of these other videos. Or, hey, why don't you leave a like? It'll help the channel grow. Or, you can leave me a comment, maybe give me an idea for another video. Anyway, I'll see you next time.